angry guy here, and women are failing out of school and blaming men for it. Women are failing out of school and blaming men for it. Let's just go ahead and jump right into the article. So the kids are not all right. Noted professor says way more students are turning in homework late, struggling to find motivation. Professor Sami Schalk said many students feel their coursework isn't as pressing or relevant to the immediate thing in their world. This is an actual picture of a retired student, uh, Carol Yeeps Getty. When influential professor Sami Schlock posted on social media that a lot of her students, so this is a female professor, were struggling to complete their homework on time this year, more even than during the events of 2020, she was flooded with replies from students and teachers who said, they were seeing the exact same trends. This has been the worst semester in terms of students' ability to get work in on time. I've never seen anything like it. And I've been teaching at the university level for over a decade. Students are not doing well, y'all. They're not okay on multiple levels. Posted Schalk, a professor of gender and women's studies at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. So this is feminist. This is a feminist. And this is coming from someone who has 48 hour no questions asked extension policy. Even that has not mitigated the amount of extremely late and missing assignments. I don't know what to do anymore. The viral tweet was viewed nearly 5.5 million times and shared thousands of times. Schalk told the messenger that between illnesses like uh, Long, you know what, family troubles, work conflicts, and for many students, a preoccupation with the events that are unfolding around the world. Coursework does not feel pressing or relevant to the immediate things in their world for many students. I think that we are in a moment where a lot of people are dealing with a lot of things and it's not about the students not working hard enough or being lazy or not caring, she said. It's absolutely about that. You know, what does something happening overseas have to do with these young people? They're so engaged in political issues and things that really don't concern them at the moment that they are using that as reasons to not do their homework, not focus on, you know, completing their education and becoming productive members of society. These people just don't want to work. This has literally nothing to do with them. But that they are making strategic choices about how to devote their time and energy, and classes might not be on the top of that list. Guys, what kind of insanity is this? It's your job to go and get an education or to go into the workforce, develop some skill sets, and begin producing and providing for yourself. This is absolute nonsense. This is uh, This is basically you know, a drive for socialism. Her assessment was echoed by dozens of college students who responded to her post citing their own personal challenges with completing coursework. From a student, we are all going through it. Many people have long health issues without realizing. Many still get issues as a result of those issues. These people are speaking nonsense, guys. These people are crazy. They're basically trying to say that after they, you know, came down with, you know, something from the events of 2020, you know, they're still dealing with issues from that. Guys, these are crazy people. Economic instability and horrible world events, one user posted in response. Many say they are lacking motivation, dealing with sadness, or just struggling to care about school. There you go. They don't care about school. Shulk, who has been teaching for 10 years, said she has never seen things get as bad for students. About one third of her students have exercised her 48 hour, no questions asked ex extension policy this semester with about 10% needing more than a week to turn in assignments. Guys, this is just basic homework. Since the events of 2020, students have had 
Additional challenges making it harder to balance cork work, Schalk said. College enrollment and completion rates went down significantly at the start of the events of 2020, and even though those rates have begun to stabilize, they're still lower than they were before 2020. According to the Education Data Initiative, there are there is an erasure of the difficulty of the last couple of years in terms of education, Schalk said. I don't want students to come into class when they're still testing testing for certain things, of course, but some of them are doing that in other classes because of their attendance policies. Some are battling these issues. Others are dealing with family members being ill, and there's, there isn't a uniform system to deal with all the different scenarios brought forth by the events of 2020. This is absolute nonsense, guys. These young people, they don't want to go to school. They don't want to get their education. They want to mess around, and now they're finding out the world is hard. You know, life is hard. You have to kind of basically buckle down. You have to study. You have to be willing to actually have some level of resilience. It, yes, it's hard, but life is hard. And, you know, it's it's not about how many – it's not about how many hits you can take in life. It's about how many it's, – it's, 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 well, it's basically about how many times you can get back up after you've been hit. And it's unfortunate. These young people, you know, they're going down and they're staying down and they're curling up in these little balls – and they don't want to do better for themselves. They don't want to do better for their futures. They have lack resilience. They, ra- they lack common sense. They lack reason, logic. And this is something that, unfortunately, you have to say that the system has failed them. The adult, their parents have failed them. Their teachers have failed them. The administrators have failed them. Society as a whole has failed them because it's coddled them. And one of the biggest mistakes that we've made as a society was handing them the iPads and basically you know, just doing our own thing. I And I will admit to that. It's it's an unfortunate thing. At my age, I'm 40 years old now, and I realize that I could honestly have a, a have a, a kid in college all, at this point. Yeah, could have had a kid when I was 22, and they'd be in college right now. It's just, it's a ridiculous world that we live in. It's a sad world that we live in. But, and of course, the majority of people in college are young women, and they're struggling. They're not able to keep up with the work. They're not, you know, they're 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 focused on issues that are happening in other countries that don't directly affect them. But unfortunately, you know, you know, col- col- universities have become such political places that instead of focusing on, you know, getting your education, they're focusing on events that take place halfway across the world. My feelings on all of this is that ultimately it's not going to turn out well for any of us in society because these young people also lack basic skill sets. They struggle with reading. They struggle with writing. They struggle with math. You know, they're graduating from high school without having to take standardized tests to prove that they have the skill sets necessary to function in the real world. They just get a high school diploma now. They're being passed from one grade to the next, even though they're failing. You know, and I said this in a, in in a, in, a, in a poll that Gen B, Gen Z beat the school system. They beat high school. You know, they beat school, and it's and people pointed out, yeah, they did. But it's not it's not because of anything that they did specifically. It's because the system basically failed to hold them accountable, and it allowed them to phase through life what w- without actually having to put in the hard work necessary. And this is the reason why we are now in this situation. And I'm, I, I'm telling you, it's, it's really upsetting. It's really frustrating. I find it to be a miserable outcome. But this is where we are as a society right now. And it's not going to get any better anytime soon. This is what we have done. We allowed this to happen. We failed to act accordingly and to you know, instill values, reasoning, logic, common sense into these young people. And now this is why we're in this position. It's extremely unfortunate. It's extremely miserable. And it's crazy like how you have these people that are trying to make excuses for what these for what's going on. I haven't been able to fully devote myself to my studies. I've been focused on the multiple issues happening around the world and as well as changing, you know, the climate currently changing, come on, and the cost of living. A student posted on X, the proximity to issues happening around the world are much closer than it ever was for some students. These are people who have friends and roommates who have 
seen family members no longer being with us. And this is such a large thing compared to generations, to two generations ago. Fewer folks have such diverse connections across the world. This is ridiculous. Futility of college. Students also said they worry that a college degree f- feels increasingly futile as a way of getting ahead. Yeah, that's true. They're, they're, they're becoming beginning to become completely useless. All the big companies, Microsoft, Facebook, Amazon, none of these companies are no longer, Apple are no longer requiring college degrees. In fact, they're saying they prefer people who don't have them. That says a whole lot. There's nothing worth working for. We're unmotivated because the thing things that used to motivate people, house, family, kids, retirement, vacation, fun, are unattainable after college. College used to ensure jobs. Now we'd be lucky to get a job in an office if student posted. I mean, there's always target, man. There's always target. I've said this already that we're heading towards what we what I call the creator economy. The gig, everyone's living in the gig economy right now, where even if you have a full time job, you have your you know you have a gig on the side, or there's there are people that are working gig, gig gigs as full time jobs. A lot of these you know Gen Z idiots are doing like DoorDash and Uber Eats as full-time jobs and pestering the world, d- d- demanding tips. But we're heading towards the creator economy now because eventually there will be some saturation in that gig economy, and it will be, and it's 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 just not sustainable. But we're heading towards a creator economy now, and a creator economy will essentially be like you. It doesn't matter if you have a college degree; it doesn't matter what you do. You're going to have to be able to create additional value. You know, for example, it's not just it won't be if you want to be a weather band. It's not good enough to just be a weather weatherman. You better know how to dance. Like there's literally a dancing weatherman. The guy's amazing, Nick. He's on YouTube. He's like 40 years old. I think we're both both born 1983. And he's known as the dancing weatherman. And this guy is always cutting it up. And I'm just saying, like, you know, for example, you look at YouTube, you have psychologists, psychiatrists, you have people, you know, tax experts, and they're basically creating additional value. And they're and then they're you know marketing their skills and then finding clients that way, and they do that by making videos. There's and it's 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 crazy. And this is what everyone has to do. Everyone now has to be able to create additional value, create their create value and create their own opportunities, which is something that the Gen Z idiots are not going to be able to do. And they don't have practical skills. They have zero practical skills, so they're in a terrible place. I mean, to be very honest, at this point, a lot of companies are looking towards baby boomers and trying to either bring them back to the workforce or prevent them from leaving period and if they say they want more money they're going to have to pay them more money or else you know they're just you know they, their argument is going to basically be you listen you either pay us this extra 50 60 thousand dollars we're asking for or we'll walk out and you can go hire one of those gen z idiots that's going to cost you millions of dollars in the long term go ahead hire one of those idiots see where it gets you all right. And then when you call us, when you call and you ask for me, then it's going to be a hundred thousand dollars because I'm going to be chilling. And it's exactly what's happening right now. Someone actually pointed this out in my comments. Imagine if imagine hiring one of these people in, as an air traffic controller. Like they're gonna they're gonna cost lives. They are going to cost lives. It sounds funny, it really isn't. Like these people are not prepared for the real world. And I've already said this that when these people cost lives what's going to happen is they're going to say who put them in charge who put this gen z idiot in charge because you're the one we're going to hold accountable you knew better you know this was an idiot and you still chose to put them in charge all right you're going to prison and you're going to prison for a long time and you should be ashamed of yourself and you're gonna have these people crying managers and hiring people you know, say crying their eyes out for because you know because they put these idiots in charge and now these idiots have caught have have you know done things like imagine someone working as an air traffic controller and they just pick up leave, just like walk out of the tower, just walk out, and as a result, you have multiple planes that just don't make it to their destination, and we have some final destination stuff happening, and unfortunately, you know, a hundred like a couple hundred people get deleted. Sometimes in a, maybe in a single day or a couple of days apart, these things just tend to happen all at once. And then it's like a nation in mourning. And of course, the Gen Z idiot is nowhere to be found. They're at home, like playing video games and watching TV and on their phone and out eating and all this other nonsense. And they're going to take these, they're going to take the millennial managers. They're going to take the, 
They're going to take the Gen Xers. They're going to take the boomers. They're going to drag these people off to prison, first jail, then prison, because they're going to say that you put them in charge. You knew they were idiots. You knew they could barely read or write. I mean, look at this. How did they even get hired in the first place? All right, you were desperate. You don't. You were desperate. There's no excuse for what you've did. Yes, obviously, we understand there's a shortage, but there was no excuse to put these people in this position. All right, you were, you didn't want to do the job. Yeah, you were trying to look for someone to shift 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 the responsibilities off to, and you hired these idiots thinking that you're going to be able to have them do even basic tasks, and this is what you get, all right? You're going to jail, and you're going to spend your, going to prison, and you're going to spend your golden years in prison. You're not coming out. You won't be coming out, not alive at least. What do you guys think regarding this? Women are failing out of school and blaming men for it. I want to hear your thoughts in the comments. Let's talk about them there. Like the video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you like the video, share the video. And just remember that all roads lead to MWA, men walking away. And cheers.